Well, the payoff for students who earn college credit while in high school, a new Indiana Commission for Higher Education report says they are more likely to enroll in college and succeed once they get there. Add to that, early college credit can save Hoosier families and the state substantial dollars. For more on early college uh, credits and the state of higher education, pleased as always to be joined by uh, Indiana Commission for Higher Education Commissioner Teresa Lovers. Uh, Teresa, uh, thanks for joining us. Hi, Gary. Um, let's talk about early college credit, getting college credit while in high school. Today, it uh, seems to be everywhere. It's very commonplace. It hasn't been around that long. Talk about uh, the importance of it to the student, but also uh, from a financial standpoint, what it means to families and also the state of Indiana. Yes, we just released our 2021 early college credit report, and it does validate all those things you just said. It uh, ensures that students are more ready for their journey after high school, more likely to enter, more likely to complete, and more likely to complete college on time. About 64% of our graduating uh, students from high school are graduating with some sort of early college credit, dual credit, or AP. And yes, it comes with a great savings to families and to the state of Indiana as well. The tune of about $160 million annually, of which about 80 million of that is um, be benefits students and families, and it's about 78 million is a benefit to the state for getting those college credits while you're in high school. And importantly, I assume this is a this is a uh, a nice boost to your goal of getting a much greater percentage of Hoosiers with that that uh, credential or education beyond high school. I appreciate you bringing that up because 2025 is going to be here before you know it, and our big goal of having 60 percent of Hoosiers having a quality credential beyond high school and a certificate, an industry certification, a two or a four year degree uh, is coming uh, very quickly. And so we are doubling down on all of our efforts uh, to make sure that students understand the importance. And the importance is really because that kind of uh, preparation is really aligned to the needs of the economy and to get a good job. Is that alignment piece? Because we hear uh, companies, we hear businesses talk a lot about that, as well as educators, that alignment between uh, the needs of, of business, the needs and in, in, in what kind of education they're getting. Do you sense Indiana's on the right path when it comes to that alignment piece? Absolutely. Uh, one of the ways I would measure this is our new strategic plan at the commission is called Reaching Higher in a State of Change. And one of our three uh, the metrics that we use is that every college degree and program would have embedded career relevance. And we're designing that career relevance in concert with our employers in the state of Indiana. The governor's workforce cabinet, which was created in 2018, is really focused on this alignment between early childhood education and lifelong learning and meeting the needs of employers. So I think that the siloed kind of thinking we had in the past has been replaced by a commitment to making sure people have an opportunity to have a meaningful career and life. I think another uh, example of that important connection between education and workforce, you typically give a state of education uh, address. This year you're going to be doing that, but in conjunction, you're also going to have uh, essentially a workforce address as well. Talk about the new format uh, when talking about that state of education and workforce. Yes, I've always done a, a state of higher education address, and we decided this was a good year to do the state of higher edu the state of education and the workforce. So I will be doing it uh, together with uh, Katie Jenner, who is the, sec the new Secretary of Education, and Fred Payne, who's the Commissioner of the Department of Workforce Development, and we'll be focused in in a strategic way on where are we as a state to meet the needs of individuals for personal prosperity and meeting the needs of employers. So it's the first time we've done something like this, but we think that it's the right time to do it and we'll focus on the right uh, areas of concern and opportunities for Hoosiers. I know there have been a number of things that uh, have transpired and are part of that state of education, state of uh, workforce now, governor's workforce cabinet among them, and these workforce readiness grants that began, I think, in 2017 or thereabouts. And the CARES Act funding has, has come to play here. Talk about these workforce readiness grants. Are they making an impact? The Workforce Ready Grant is a part of uh, under the next level jobs. And we have the Workforce Ready Grant, which is really provides uh, tuition free certificates in high demand, five sectors, so that an individual who needs to come back and be skilled up and get a skill that meets the needs of the economy today can do so. And it's uh, tuition free. We also have an employer training grant where the state provides funding for employers to train their, their incumbent or their new workers. 
Under the Workforce Ready Grant, we now have over 21,000 Hoosiers who have completed wow. a high demand wow. quality certificate. And the measure of success is that the median annual wage gain for that is $6,800. Under the Employer Training Grant, the median annual wage gain is uh, about close to $6,000 as well. So not only are they getting the skills they need, but they're getting a bump in, and they're getting a better job that pays them more money. So we think that um, not only do we have 21,000 uh, Hoosiers who have completed one, but we have 41,000 Hoosiers who are enrolled and are prepared to actually complete those certificates in the near future. Yeah, final question. I know you'll get into some uh, specifics, obviously, in the uh, state of education address, but as you look at that state of education, where things are a critical point, perhaps, in particular coming out of the pandemic, you know, a lot of, a lot of focus right now on uh, where the state's economy is, where it is going coming out of the pandemic, uh, how workforce will react. Is the timing of this, uh, in particular, uh, critical? Well, it is, and I think, you know, we're coming out of this very well in terms of unemployment rate uh, dropping, mm -hmm. but what has become abundantly clear during this time is the disparity that exists between those who have education and those who don't, mm -hmm. those who, especially low-income and minority students, we've been making a lot of progress with the closing the achievement gap. It's safe to say that those, that progress has stalled during 2020, and we have to redouble our efforts to make sure that this opportunity for a better job is for all, not just for some. Yeah, some great perspective. Uh, Teresa Lubbers, the commissioner, the Indiana Commission for Higher Education, as always, thank you, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.